Hello, everybody, and welcome to New Consciousness Review. I'm Miriam Knight, and our guest today is Dr. Kedar Prasad. Dr. Prasad got his Ph.D. degree in radiation biology from the University of Iowa. He is the former director of the Center for Vitamins and Cancer Research at the University of Colorado School of Medicine, and he's a fellow of the American College of Nutrition. He even served as president of the International Society of Nutrition and Cancer for about eight years. He has published over 200 articles in peer-reviewed journals, journals and authored or edited 15 books in the areas of radiation biology, nutrition and cancer, nutrition and neurological diseases, especially Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. Today, Dr. Prasad is the chief scientific officer of the premier Myconutrient Corporation in the San Francisco Bay Area. Welcome, Dr. Prasad. Thank you very much, uh, Maria. It's it's so nice to have you with us. And your book is very much in the minds of so many people who have cancer either immediately or in their family or amongst their friends. You wrote this book, Fighting Cancer with Vitamins and Antioxidants. You wrote this with your son. I take it uh, yeah. he is as passionate about this research as you are. That's right. That's correct. So um, what... What made you um, focus on this area of antioxidants in the treatment of cancer? I have been working on this issue of antioxidant and cancer for the last 25 years, and I saw that uh, there is a lot of confusion both in the industry and among the professional uh, how to use antioxidant uh, for the health purpose and in the management of diseases. Furthermore, the recent study showing that even the uh, diagnostic doses of radiation can increase the risk of cancer uh, prompted me to revise the book, which this is a fourth uh, edition of the book. Mm -hmm. And I decided to uh, revise this book and include some of the recent uh, studies that have been performed both on the cancer and in the antioxidant. And that's the reason. Another reason is that uh, the risk of cancer or incidence of cancer has increased during the last decades. Ten years ago, I used to quote that the new cases, incidence in the United States, is about 1.2 million per year. Mm -hmm. Most recent statistics shows that it has increased to 1.5 million new cases per year. Wow. The current recommendation for prevention is not working and because people don't follow or whatever the reason may be. And so we decided that uh, this is the best time also to bring attention again to use how to use this antioxidant for prevention of cancer as well as for the uh, management of uh, cancer during therapy. Mm -hmm. Well, you talk, we talk about the um, causes of cancer uh, and you were you were talking about sources of radiation, including diagnostic radiation. Uh, in your book, you also mentioned things like frequent flyers. Right. Um, and uh, most recent study showed that even the long term use for longer period of uh, use of cell phone, which emits electromagnetic radiation, uh, has been shown to increase the risk of brain cancer. So. These are the new emerging issue by new technology, and that's another concern that the cancer is increasing. These, these are the, one of the contributing factors for increasing the cancer incidence. And so you're saying that the use of antioxidants um, is essential, really, both as a protective measure, preventative measure, and as a treatment for people who have already had uh, radiation exposure, and then also as a an adjunct to uh, cancer treatments like chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Is that correct? I think that's very correct. Uh, take, for example, the current prevention strategy uh, recommended by National Cancer Institute or American Cancer Society are that quit the smoking, which we all agree. Mm -hmm. 
But the problem is that the number of smokers, even though decreased in the adult, but increase in the teenager, and therefore the number of smokers of about 50 million remains same. So in spite of our best education program and all the things which is a very good thing, the number of smokers has not decreased. Hmm. On the top of that, now people feel that even a passive smoking means if somebody is your friend and you are smoking before them or before the family member, you are smoking, the increase, there would be increased risk of cancer among those who are not a smoker but mm -hmm. happen to be consume a smoker, inhale a smoking because their friend or family members were smoking. Right. And, the, and, and another, so, so we agreed that we should do every effort possible to convince people to quit a smoking. And this is a good program which is going on. Mm -hmm. but has not had much impact as yet. The another recommendation we shared with those, uh, with the federal agency and, and American Cancer Society is that modifying your diet and lifestyle. And so that low fat, high fiber diet is very useful with plenty of fruits and vegetables. So these two are the main recommendations made by the National Cancer Institute and the American Cancer Society. What we say, which is as important as the Two, first two is that the appropriate type of uh, taking micronutrient daily, twice daily, can reduce the risk of cancer, but that preparation has to be age-specific, gender-specific, and health condition. In other words, one formula cannot fit to all. Mm -hmm. That's the place we differ from the National Cancer Institute because they are reluctant to recommend to the public even though the task force uh, uh, the appointed by the United States government recommended that the, uh, the, the, the supplement antioxidant can reduce the, for example, in case of diabetes, uh, some of the complications which are related to diabetes. Not a general recommendation, but the idea was that if you take uh, the, uh, healthy, uh, uh, the right kind of uh, micronutrient, it can decrease the risk of varieties of diseases, including cancer. And so we feel very strongly that all these three components are equally important, uh, quitting a smoking, taking the right kind of diet, modify your lifestyle, reduce the stress, and so on. But third component is as important, which is the supplement with the right kind of antioxidant preparation. It's interesting that you say that the task force, despite having made these recommendations, these recommendations have not been um, put out by the, the uh, FDA or, or uh, NIH. Um, I think there was just a report um, that I read within the last few days about the um, recommendations against the use of mercury in, uh, in dental work. Right. And all of the professionals, uh, all of the scientists have come out with this, you know, years ago, and the FDA is still dragging its feet in terms of saying that this is an, a toxic substance and should not be put in the mouth. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that, exactly. Mercury, I did some research while I was in Colorado uh, on the mercury toxicity, especially to the nervous system, is extremely toxic. I mean, methyl mercury, which is organic form of methyl mercury, is extremely toxic. It can cause cognitive dysfunction and all kinds of neurological diseases. And the interesting thing, at least the experimental data shows, and we have shown also and published this information, that some of the antioxidant can reduce the toxicity of the mercury in case somebody has a, you know, exposure to or somebody is uh, eating too much, you know, fish which is mercury contaminated and so mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And so in, in other words, this is one of the another environment pollution. Or you can say that, you know, in case of teeth, is medical. So nowadays they don't put mercury, I was told, but still some people are still maybe doing it. Some people are still doing it. But it, it's interesting when you point out about the protective effect of the antioxidants. This, ironically, is also the basis for um, a lot of researchers saying that you should not use antioxidants together with cancer treatments because they protect the cancer cells just as much as they protect the, um, the, the, the healthy cells. Yeah, here is why there is a controversy. This is very important, Marianne, that you brought up. First, even for prevention, 
why there is a, we will divide this discussion in two components. For the prevention, why there is a controversy even for prevention? Mm-hmm. And, and they, that official don't recommend it. And the reason are the following. The most of the clinical studies that have been performed to date, that people quote against using the vitamin, has been performed with a single antioxidant, like beta carotene among the smokers, or vitamin E among the high risk for heart disease. Mm-hmm. But here is the problem of that kind of trial. This is very well established that when you use a one antioxidant and when they get oxidized, they act as a pro-oxidant rather than as an antioxidant. In other words, it, they become harmful, harmful molecule. So it is also known that heavy smoker, for example, they have very high level of free radical generated in their blood system, and they have a, so when you give the one antioxidant like beta carotene, then what will happen after some time, they will become oxidized because there is too much oxidative environment in, among the smokers. And when they get oxidized, they will act as a pro-oxidant and thereby increase the risk of chronic diseases. In this case, they were measuring in cancer. Hmm. So from a single antioxidant in that kind of population, you would have predicted that this will happen. And that is exactly where, what they found that the cancer risk, lung cancer risk increased by 17%. But my problem with that kind of trial is that if you know in advance the biology of the antioxidant, namely it become oxidized, then it acts as a pro-oxidant rather than as an antioxidant. And if you also know in advance that heavy smokers will have increased oxidative environment, then why you will do the experiment? So from that kind of trial that says you should not take beta carotene in any forms, any place. In other words, all antioxidants under all conditions, you should not take it, which is totally irrational conclusion. Sure. You see what I mean? And so this yeah. is the main reason. And, and if the same antioxidant like vitamin uh, beta carotene or vitamin E is present in a multiple antioxidant preparation, then they don't get oxidized because the other antioxidant will prevent the oxidation of beta carotene or each other and mm-hmm. therefore they will never become a pro-oxidant and therefore we are suggesting it never use individual antioxidant for any region even normal people mm-hmm. always use them in combination right exactly